This is what civic play looks like. This is the Atlanta Beltline Lantern Parade 2014, hosted by the crew of the Grateful Gluttons, where thousands of people made their own lanterns and danced with marching bands down two miles of the Atlanta Beltline. The Lantern Parade is based in participation. It's not come see the parade, it's come be the parade. There is no parade without you. It's where your creative play is a gift to your city. To work is human, to play is divine. It does all kinds of good stuff for us. Our joyful shared memories are our greatest treasures. They keep us connected to our people and our places. This year, I had lantern-making workshops with 566 of the sweetest people, making fantastically individualized lanterns to take part in a collaboration with thousands of strangers, people they share a city with. It's been fascinating to see this grow, to see its sentiment come to operate on a civic level, where people look at your lantern and say, that is so beautiful. Did you make that? Wow, I love Atlanta. Your lantern, your time spent with scissors and glue, your presence is making people feel a great love for our city. I'm often asked, how did we get thousands of people to participate? <laughs> they like it. In fact, they love it. We love it. We can trust that the desire for creative play is universal. Civic play is happening in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, I have been smuggling Louisiana Mojo into Atlanta for 20 years. I've lived between Atlanta and New Orleans. My first Mardi Gras changed the trajectory of my life. I had no idea what Mardi Gras was about. So get this, Mardi Gras is not thrown by the city of New Orleans. It is thrown by the crews. The crews are private social and pleasure clubs who throw parades as a gift to their city. It's a really good gift. It's social and cultural infrastructure and cash. The direct economic impact of Mardi Gras 2014 $147 million. These big crews are made up of a thousand people. The little crews, 10, they're just people. They are not theatrical companies. The big crews hire professional float builders, but it is their 200 dudes who are all dressed as Dorothy on the Wizard of Oz float. The crews have dedicatedly been cracking up their city for over 150 years. And their parades are going 12 miles through town. It's blocks and blocks of block parties for five days and nights. It's one big family reunion, homecoming dance party around these parades. Not participating in Mardi Gras is like not voting. You personally are expected to contribute to the cultural character of your city. New Orleans spun my head around. The creative capacity of individuals, playfully focused, inhabiting their public space, is a love bomb. Every single time, it fosters enduring bonds between people and place. It alters social convention. People from all walks of life laugh and chat and dance together. It is civic play, and it delivers the gift of civic kinship. When we lay down these joyful shared memories in a place, it is a blessing on that place. New Orleans loves New Orleans. I fell in love with it, and I stayed for 10 years. Now, in New Orleans, you cannot just jump in a cruise parade. You would need to join a crew or you can start one. I am the proud captain of the crew of the Grateful Gluttons. 
advocating grown-up playtime since 1999. I founded my crew in New Orleans, and I used it as a ruse to get my Atlanta friends to come to Mardi Gras. I named them to the crew, I sent them a king cake and a pile of beads, and they came. The first year of my crew, I had three people from New Orleans and eight folks from Atlanta. And my Atlanta crew really got it. So, when a divorce ran me out of town, I came to Atlanta, and my crew started parading. For the Little Five Points Halloween Parade, we built one float to parade for one mile for one hour, and we lived for it. For years in a row, we won the top prize, the coveted Witch's Cup. Our parade play has always been a love bomb for us. Our private collection of joyful shared memories in Atlanta is an embarrassment of riches. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. Mardi Gras was five months after the storm and I had to go. Witnessing how this tradition of civic play served my crushed and broken city was powerful. It drove home the value of civic play in terms of community health and sanity. I heard story after story of what folks had gone through to make it home for Mardi Gras, how they had to come, how they needed it, how they needed their soul revived. What else in the world can do that for us? Call us together and revive our souls? The Katrina Mardi Gras gave me my marching orders. Deliver this gift to your city, not just to your friends. Figure out how to get it to anyone that doesn't have it. While we live, let's live. Well, it wasn't like crews were popping up all over Atlanta. So I started thinking of things based in public participation, where everyone is invited to come play with the crew. Ironically, three weeks before Katrina, I had built Katrina. She is the Day of the Dead icon whose name is Katrina as a seven-foot giant skeleton puppet that you wear on your head. Based on Katrina, I wrote my first grant in Atlanta asking for funding for the crew to build 50 giant skeleton puppets in free public workshops. Were there 50 people in Atlanta willing to wear a giant skeleton on their head? Spend 20 hours to build one? Oh yeah, there were. There are 85 known giant skeletons in the city of Atlanta and come play became the crew's tagline. So for our next social shenanigan, we made our annual springtime gnome march a world record attempt. To be clear that everyone is invited to dress up like a garden gnome and to help bring global attention to important gnome issues. Gnomes have a lot of issues. Fighting gnomophobia, legalizing weeds, we have gnome land security, and the nomenclature is rich. <laughs> I, I have been parading with my gnomies for seven years, and no, we have never won a world record, but there's no place like gnome. In the meanwhile, I got clued into lantern parades based in participation around the world, and I wanted to bring one to Atlanta and the crew got behind it. In 2010, Art on the Beltline gave a call for projects on the Atlanta Beltline. At the time, the Beltline was that creepy place back behind the dumpsters, and our city needed to believe that it would become our country's greatest urban renewal project. It was perfect. Holding up a light is a universal gesture of faith and support and a symbol of community around the world. And Atlanta needs to hold up a light for the Beltline in perpetuity. Five years in, 
The creepy place behind the dumpster is like Atlanta's boardwalk. The parade route section of the trail has generated $775 million in economic development. And the Lantern Parade is an Atlanta tradition. It is a love bomb you can put on your calendar. We need those. So if you're in Atlanta, come play with us or go stir it up where you live. Gift your creative play to your city. It's your civic duty to make wherever you are a fun place to be. To work is human, to play is divine. Thank you. Hit it, boys.
shout out for TEDx Peachtree. Yeah. Big shout out to all the volunteers who helped put this together. Thanks to all of you for attending. If you liked what you experienced today, spread the word. Help sponsor us.